This is a reading from Maria Voltorta's Notebooks, 1943, July the 30th. <clears throat> Jesus says, Let us look today at how much reflection there is on the lesser ones. I state through the mouth of Isaiah, having the humble speak, or speaking to them. Without you, Lord our God, they have made us slaves of the masters. Grant that only for your sake we may recall your name. Whoever dies lives again. The giants do not rise anew. For this reason you visited them, exterminated them, and made every memory of them disappear. Go, my people, enter your, into your rooms, close your doors behind you, and hide for a brief instant until the indignation has passed. Behold, the Lord will go out of his dwelling and visit the iniquity of those who are against him on the earth. On that day the Lord will visit the Leviathan, the agile serpent, the Leviathan, the twisting serpent with his unbending sword, large and strong. With barbarous words, in a foreign tongue, the Lord will speak to this people, to whom I have said, Here is my rest, refresh the weary, this is my relief. But they did not want to listen to me. And the Lord said, Because this people approaches me with its mouth and honors me with its lips, but its heart is far from me, and they offer me worship with human precepts and teachings, for this reason I will again excite this people's admiration with a great, stupendous prodigy. The wisdom of the wise, wise shall perish. Because the oppressor has disappeared, the mocker is annihilated, and those who plotted evil are exterminated, who made men sin by their words, who laid snares for whoever reproached them, and without reason withdrew from the just one. For this reason, reason the Lord says, Jacob shall not be confused. There will be no blush on, this, on his face now, but when he sees his children, the work of his hands in his breast, he shall glorify my name. And those who wandered in spirit shall learn knowledge, and the backbiters shall learn the law. On that day each shall cast aside his idols of gold and silver, which your hands made for you so as to sin. And Asher shall fall by the sword, which is not of man, and the sword which is not of man shall devour him. And he shall flee, not before the sword, and his youth shall pay the tribute. The prime cause of evil, to be left without God. You have not wanted to have God for a master, and a benign master, and you have thus had masters who have degraded your freedom as men to the mortification of slaves. They have lent, sold, and recovered you like slaves, like slaves sent to death, laughing and growing fat on your pain. The world is dying because it no longer has God for a master. You, in particular, are dying because you have not wanted God as a fatherly master. May God will that you should turn to him now. In his name is salvation, life is life in his name, and death is resurrection. He who lives in the Lord never dies. It is the giants, that is, those who raise their power as flesh and blood proudly against heaven, that draw down the divine thunderbolt and collapse, never to rise again. They have had everything on earth, since for them only the law of flesh and blood was alive. The eternal, luminous kingdom of the Spirit is thus at an end, at an end, starting from this earth, where they have killed it by their own hand, and at an end where there is no temporal limit, where dead souls do not enter. When the hour of indignation strikes in heaven, and justice descends to deliver its blow, take charity and prudence as your norm. Withdraw, instead of cackling like cockerels that see the kite. Withdraw, instead of backbiting, for judgment is up to God alone. And pray to the Lord, charity and prudence to obtain the victory of good over evil and the triumph of peace in nations, institutions, and hearts. God has no need of your advice to punish. He knows when and how he should use the word, the sword, to slay the eternal arising one. The monster seducing you, opposed to the divine one rising again, who has saved you and saves you by his blood, to whom the world's great and small too often are unable to give heed. Deaf to my aggrieved prayers, that, ref that refuge be given to the one weary with love, to your Jesus, who suffers with a perfect love, always rejected. Oh, if only you would come to me with your hearts, children, so tenderly loved by your God, Father, and brother. You would rest all from my love if you came to me with your love. All for it, all for it is a supreme pain for me not to be able to cover you with gifts in this life and the other. Even the worship you offer me has lost much of my sign, and taken on human forms more in keeping with your way of acting, weighed down by human heaviness. 
Come back to the Lord, children, to the source from which life springs forth. The passage of centuries does not burden it with old age, for time is an instant compared to my eternity. Wash your souls in the source. Immerse your spirits therein, that they may see, that they may see God and the prodigies I work to excite your admiration, so that your minds will be stripped of the knowledge of the wise, a fallacious knowledge, and learn knowledge from me, who am the wisdom of God. And yet you see, O oh dear sons and daughters, what your God is able to do for you. I have seen the affliction of my chosen people, that which you experience, because it is already upon you, and that which you would have experienced, already prepared in the shadow, and I have made provision. But woe to you as well, if the lesson should be of no use. How could I always come running, make provision, and forgive? How, how, if you too should become oppressors? How, if you too should become mockers? How, if you too should drift apart from the just one, advising you for your own good, and lay your snares against him? He is the bearer of my word, he and his ministers, and in my word there is true knowledge, and the true law which yield good. Make the face of your Jesus and his true disciples be tinged with joy, and that face and those faces will take on that color when they see your triumph over all the idolatries of sense, money, and pride which have always tormented you. You understand who the ashers are by yourself, but I say to all, act so as not to deserve as they did the sword which is not of man. No, be good. Your God does not want you to... Sh your God does not want to show you the punishing sword, but he wants to open to you the arms capable only of loving and blessing, and say to you, Come, O sons and daughters, and rest in the peace of your Father. Jesus says, And now after the black tesseras and the purple ones, the golden tesseras in Isaiah's mosaic, the Lord says, Behold, I shall place a stone as the foundation of Zion, a chosen stone, a cornerstone, precious, grounded on the foundations, let whoever believes not be in haste. Whoever proceeds in justice and tells the truth, whoever hates gain derived from calumny and shakes every gift out of his hands, and whoever covers his ears so as not to hear talk of blood and closes his eyes so as not to see evil shall dwell in a wonderful place. The fortresses in the cliffs shall be his lofty dwelling. Turn your gaze towards Zion. Your eyes shall see Jerusalem, the dwelling of abundance, a tent which can never be trans transferred. Its pegs shall never be removed, and none of its rope shall be broken. After becoming inebriated in the heavens, my sword shall suddenly plunge down upon the people condemned to destruction by my judgment. Demons shall be found there in its devastated land. Diligently search in the book of the Lord and read, not one of these things is lacking, and one is not without the other, for what comes out of my mouth is ordered by him, and his spirit draws things together. The chosen stone, a cornerstone, and the precious stone, with a secure foundation upon which the eternal Zion rises up, is my church, and the morality, morality coming from my law, of which the church is the teaching chair. It is vain to try to put another law in its place. None is so safe and just as this one, for this one is dictated by a divine mind. But in hearts as well I place a cornerstone upon which your spiritual, individual Zion must be based, and from which your spirit must hurl itself in, onto the ascent leading to me, into the supernatural kingdom for which I created you, and which is not closed to you until the moment of death, but whose doors of light are always open for you. Blessed are those able to live in the Spirit, their earthly life is a foretaste of loving blessedness with me. They are the ones that proceed in justice and truth, who do not seek wealth acquired badly by fraud and usury, by deceit and calumny. They are the ones not thirsty for vengeance or hungry for vice, clean in thought, heart, and hands. For them the dwellings in my Father's kingdom are kept, and beginning in this life the Lord's grace encircles them like a fortress on cliffs. They are the secure... Only their will, if it becomes perverted, can break this security of theirs, whose cornerstones are the will of God and their will, the word of God and their obedience to the law. The Jerusalem about which Isaiah speaks is my church. Here below, the antechamber of the heavenly Jerusalem, in her there is an abundance, not of human wealth, but of divine treasures of forgiveness and knowledge, as there are divine treasures of blessedness in the heavenly Jerusalem. 
No human force can devastate my church like a whirlwind to the point of destroying her. I shall be with her to act as a peg and a rope. When the time comes for the earth to cease to be, my church, which cannot perish because it is cemented by the blood of a god and of his saints, will be transported by the angels into heaven. A people, Isaiah says, shall be struck by the sword of justice. But there will be many more, for the world has fornicated with the devil in many parts, and still others are on the point of sinning, in spite of all I have done to keep them on the way of life. Pray, pray, pray a lot to prevent new condemnations originated by new fornications. The demons, oh, the demons are already in the place where I shall punish. It is the demons installed as masters in hearts that lead the nations to death. And there are peoples in which only a few hearts are not the dwelling place of demons. Legions of legions of devils move whole nations like puppets. And how can I reign where my heart, and how can I reign where hearts have become the dwelling of the sons and daughters of Lucifer? The prophetic word has other applications, but I have wanted to show it to you in reference to the hour you are living through, and not to tell you more so as not to demoralize you more. Pray. Your God will open the doors for you before you experience the maximum horror. For the time being, enter into the dwelling of his heart, and give me your love to appease my justice. In truth, I tell you that to die of love is the bloodiest of deaths, because one suffers not from one thing alone, but from the things of all creation. One suffers for the sake of God and for one's neighbor. It is the death of your Jesus. For, know this, the most fitting word on my death is not scourges, tortures, or cross. It is love. It is love that sacrificed the Son of God. Love for you. May it be love that sacrifices the new redeemers.